Okay, so before I dive into all the mental health videos that I'm going to be doing, so I've done a lot of physical health stuff, so now it's time. Now I feel like I'm ready to do the mental health stuff. If you saw that last video, I mentioned it briefly. What helped me the most is Joseph Campbell, but not necessarily Joseph Campbell. It's more so the mythology that Joseph Campbell dissected, you could say. So who is Joseph Campbell? He's, he's dead now. He was this literature professor at the university. I don't remember which. He was a professor for a long time, and the core of his work is mythology and comparing it with religion, just mythology in general. But he didn't start with mythology. I think he was just a literary professor and then he started reading mythological stories and then he got sucked in to that rabbit hole. And so what, what he did was he's read all the mythologies from all cultures across all time periods, meaning Egyptian mythology, Greek mythology, Norse mythology with the Vikings, Odin and Thor and all that, Buddhism, Taoism, including modern mythology, Christianity, Islam, Judaism. He studied pretty much all of the world's religions, new and old, and he found that they all tell you the same story. Maybe the characters are different, maybe the, the lifestyles of these people were different, but all of them have the same structure, and all of them talk about pretty much the same character, and that's the hero. And so he wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, and where he kind of dissects all of this, and he, he realized there's an outline that all of these stories follow, and I'll see if I can find a photo of that outline. But literally, if you read any of these mythologies, any of these stories, you can trace, I mean, they're not all the same, but you can pretty much trace the story through the outline. So that's really interesting. That's weird. How did all of these cultures across different time periods come up with the same stories? So there's two ways that could happen. There's diffusion the where the culture of one society transfers to another one, but that's more difficult because like the Vikings never met the Egyptians. The Aztecs never met never met the Chinese. There's you have all these cultures, plus there are different time periods completely. So you have all these cultures that didn't know each other, never met each other. I mean they, they never knew that the other existed. Yet they produce the same stories. So, one is diffusion, which is more unlikely. But the second is, you could say, is God. Or you could say that all of humanity shares some part of the human psyche together. So these stories, they, they illustrate a collective subconscious, you could say. They concretize the idea that we're all the same, that people a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three thousand years ago are just like us now. They, they feel the same things we feel. They ask the same questions that we ask about life and the mystery of this reality. And so that's what Joseph Campbell discovered. And it's taken me like, I'd say like two years to really understand what he was saying because he speaks very smart and very quick and he's throwing these concepts at you and he'll say one thing and you're just like oh shit it's a profound intellectual experience and you'll stay there but he'll keep going and so you're like four sentences behind still pondering this one part but he's, it's, it's overwhelming so it's not on netflix anymore they pulled it those fools it's called the power of myth if you can find it or buy it, I pirated it, watch it. I can watch a little more now, but initially I could only watch like 20 minutes of each episode before I'm just like mentally overwhelmed. And then I'd have to like think over what I, what I heard 
for like the next two, three days before I could watch any more. So what I'm going to do with th these mental health series is I'm going to be like a light version of Joseph Campbell. Think of me like as an intro to his work. If you want to really dive in, watch his stuff, read his stuff, I'm like the intro to that. So Joseph Campbell himself didn't really help me. It was the mythologies that helped me. And, and he is not telling you how to live your life, or what to do with your life. The mythologies tell you that. He only deconstructs them in a way for you to understand. And once you understand how important mythology is, so mythology, believe it or not, is everything. It is <laughs> the basis of human psychology. It is a window into ourselves from the past. It has answers to the universe in life. It has all of these things, which is insane because they're just stories. Because when you think of mythology, you're like, oh, this is an interesting story. Oh, that's a, that's a cool story with a nice message. But it's way more than that. It, it, it becomes, it is a blueprint of how to live your life. And it, and it just constantly reinforces the idea that all, all humans are the same. And so once you start diving into these stories, you realize that these stories, they, they aren't like stories of today. The stories today are mostly developed by a team of writers. There's a group of people, maybe just one writer, that kind of sits down and kind of thinks of, oh, let's make a compelling story to entertain people and they go back and forth like yeah that's a good story yeah that's a good plot line these stories are not like that once you read them and understand them you realize that these stories are are really like a window into the human subconscious that no one sat down and created these stories no no group of people that's not how these stories originated they the stories pretty much just came to be because it was my my theory is it was either a person or a group of people that peered into their subconscious and saw something, right? And then when they come out of it, they tell you this thing, this thing that they saw, this thing that really puts life into perspective. I know that probably sounds insane, but once you read these mythologies and you start to understand them, then it's like, oh yeah, that's right, yeah. So the big problem of our conception of mythology is that for the longest time we've been reading them literally. We know now, keep in mind, mythology was a past religion. People actually thought these. This was the actual worldview of these people. And now we know today with science and greater general knowledge that a lot of these stories, all of these stories, they, c they could not have physically happened. They are not set in reality, you could say. So we, we see that and we rely too much on that to judge these stories because we know none of this is possible. But these stories aren't meant to be read literally. They're meant to be wet, read like poetry because everything within the stories are metaphors. And really the only way you can describe the mystery of life and the universe and all of this is through metaphor and imagery. You can't say any of these things literally. So once you look past the improbable, then you can see the truth within these stories. Then you can understand that what they're trying to tell you. So once you understand mythology, you understand that it makes you question your own life and your own reality and your own actions, but it also guides you into the right way, you could say. And today, in modern society, we don't have a collective mythology. We all have different religions. If we have a religion, we all believe in different things, you could say. So today, we have to kind of find our own mythology because that you have to have it. It's pretty necessary in your life. And so we all have it. It's just I didn't realize that I had it until I realized what mythology was. But that is beyond the scope of this video. I'll have to make another video talking about that because that's another 20, 30 minute thing. 
I don't want to go off on that tangent. I'm trying to stay within this video. So, that's pretty much it. I think I've covered everything I wanted to. All this talk of mythology. I'll, I'll give you one story. I won't dissect it for you, but I'll give you a story, one of my favorites, that kind of really embodies the insanity of this. So, this, this story comes from Hinduism, and it's about the Lord Shiva, which we've all probably heard of. Yeah, I'm not going to give you any context, I'm just going to tell you the story, and I'll dissect it in another video. So Shiva sleeps on a thousand-headed snake in the middle of a lake. From Shiva's navel grows the stem, and at the end of the stem is a lotus flower. When the lotus flower blooms, a god is born within the middle of the lotus flower. That god's name is Brahma. And when that god opens his eyes, he creates, he's the creator God. He creates everything that we see and know. And when he closes his eyes, everything is gone. And then when he opens his eyes, he creates everything again. And he opens his eyes and closes his eyes for 432,000 years. And then he finally dies and he falls off. The lotus flower dies. The lotus flower falls off. And then a new lotus flower grows and a new Brahman is born, the cycle repeats itself. Every single part of that story has meaning. Everything from the lake, to the snake, to Shiva sleeping, to the lotus flower, everything is connected and it all signifies something. There's symbolism in all of that. That's a crazy story that no one sat down and came up with. It's just, it's just too crazy. It's just like, what the f Okay, I'm gonna leave you with that. Look. Here's my social media and stuff. And I'm gonna do another video. This channel is gonna change a little just because I'm so much more busy with other stuff. I'll do another video explaining that later on. Yeah. All right, I'll see you later.